hello everyone while the world and india are fighting against the covid-19 pandemic so i thought it would be wise to prepare uh, some questions uh, regarding this current affairs and these questions i am sure would be useful for the students preparing for bank ssc railway and other competitive exams so i have prepared a set of 15 questions so i'll be going and presenting them to you and i'll also be discussing the options in the background of those options hope you may like this and if you like it you kindly share it with your other aspirants friends so that they may also have some knowledge about the recent novel corona virus so let's go ahead and start off this quiz i am uh, sandeep kambampati i am the director of dimensions coaching center which provides coaching for various competitive exams we are stationed at guntur in andhra pradesh okay so let's start off with the first question now uh, the first question is the word quarantine is derived from so in the uh, media newspapers and all we come across this word right so people have been sent into isolation they have been put under quarantine so from which language actually is this word quarantine derived from that is the question and the answer for this is the the italian word the quarantine is derived from the italian word which is quaranta quaranta gioni so this word was used uh, when it was the time of this uh, black plague or the bubonic plague when uh, the ships which have come to the harbor the sailors who have come in those ships they were asked to stay back for 40 days uh, in isolation that 40 days you called in italian language as quaranta gioni so out of that word quaranta is the word quarantine derived from so it's not an english word it's not a german word or it's not a mandarin word you know maybe we we think that because the virus emanated in china so therefore we may a student may think that it was a mandarin uh word so therefore uh, i made sure that uh, you have correct knowledge that this word is derived from the italian okay let's go to the next question now so the second question is the difference between the words epidemic and pandemic is based on yes so we come across these uh, <clears throat> words generally in the papers in the news that they call something like outbreak they call endemic they call epidemic and they call pandemic so these are words uh, people generally use them interchangeably and there is a lot of confusion uh, around these words so let me make uh, these very clear to you now outbreak is something uh, where a disease has just broken out and it is spreading more than expected it started spreading more than expected that you call it as a outbreak now endemic is something which is constantly present in a section of people in a particular area now endemic is not necessarily used only in terms of biological disease point of view endemic is also used to represent certain characteristics of a population so endemic uh, always need not give you a negative connotation so endemic is constantly present in a group of people or in a particular area now as far as the word epidemic is concerned epidemic is far as is concerned with the outbreak of a disease now which is contained geographically to a particular area or a particular group of people now this is temporary purely temporary now endemic is something which is constantly present now epidemic is a kind of a disease which is temporary but which has now spread to a particular community or a particular area within a country now when this endemic blows out of proportion and it starts spreading to various countries and various continents that is when we start using this word called word called pandemic now pandemic is the highest in terms of this hierarchy now pandemic is where it is a global phenomena now epidemic is where it has been reduced to a particular country or a particular region or a particular community now endemic is where it is constantly present in a particular set of people or a community now whereas outbreak is a is a disease going out of proportion but still regulated to a particular area so i hope i have made this particular thing uh, clear so as far as the answer for this question is concerned the word the difference between these words epidemic and pandemic they are based on the area of its spread clear so let's go ahead as a third question now the first corona case in india was reported from so the first corona case in india was reported from thrissur in kerala um, uh, it seems to be a medical student a medical uh, student a female uh, who has written from uh, china wuhan 
and that is the first case that is taken from india and such kind of cases we generally call them as index cases because they are the base we take them as the base uh, so that is the base case so the index case has been recorded at a place called thrissur in china I mean in kerala so a student who has returned from wuhan china that is taken as the index case then next what is the full form of covid 19 so this corona virus earlier it was called as the novel corona virus later on we started calling it as covid 19 so what exactly is the full form of this word called covid 19 now covid 19 stands for corona virus disease 2019 this the corona virus disease now corona is a family of virus meaning that there are certain variants and it starts to mutate and it takes various forms so in that we are calling this as corona virus because that belongs to the same family of corona virus but it is a disease which occurred in the year 2019 so therefore it is the it, it made sense to call it as corona virus disease in 2019 so that is the full form of covid 19 next which virus causes the covid 19 so as i told you as a family of corona virus there are number of them so the corona virus earlier caused something called as sars now sars you know severe acute respiratory syndrome uh, way back if you have observed sars but it has got a lesser contagion rate and lesser fatality rate so sars was also caused by Uh, uh family of corona virus so present covid 19 is caused by the sars which belongs to corona virus family 2 that's what they are calling it as sars cov2 corona virus 2 so the earlier one was formed uh, or result of sars cov1 currently it is sars cov2 now ebola is also a family of virus Uh, which majorly attacked uh, pregnant women and it has got tremendous impact on the infants or the fetus uh, mers is middle eastern respiratory syndrome that is also caused by the virus again is also a family of corona virus so the current uh, strain is called the sars cov2 which is causing the covid 19 then next which part of the virus helps in invading and attacking and attaching to the receptors of the human cells now that is how exactly this virus will work right so virus what they do is that they they come and attach to a particular human cell and once they attach to the human cell they almost replicate the behavior which is similar to that of the human cell so therefore the human cell organelle they start thinking that this is their own cell and that is when they start allowing the virus to enter into the cell once the virus is inside the cell it will hijack the cell organelles and it starts replicating itself and once the entire cell organelle have been used for that purpose then it bursts out of that cell uh, giving out the various strains of the same virus and these extra virus they go and attach to the other corresponding cells and that's how they keep repeating the process Now, there is the same reason similar reason why the computer virus have also been given the same name because they keep spreading from one host to the other host so in this case the uh, novel corona virus which part of that virus is going to attach to a human cell that is called as the s protein there are various kinds of protein you call it as an envelope protein there is one there is an e protein but in this case it is the s protein so s protein will go and attach to the receptor of the human cell and they fuse and then they start doing the the concept of transmitting the dna or the rna of the virus into that of the human cell so matrix protein is also a part of the the structure of the virus nuclear capsid uh, capsid is generally the head part of the virus that is also a part of the virus structure but in this case the specific the question specifically asked about which part of this virus is going to help the virus in attaching to the human cell that is the s protein they are called the spike proteins s stands for spike so spike protein well the seventh question now what is the designation of mr lav agarwal who is the official spokesperson of government of india regarding this covid 19 so every day in the night you come across this press briefing regarding the number of new infected cases the people who have 
discharged from the hospital and the number of fatalities and that mr love agarwal he is the person who gives out this information what exactly is his designation now mr love agarwal is a joint secretary in the ministry of health and family welfare a joint secretary there are various kinds of secretaries under secretary additional secretary you have chief secretary so he is a joint secretary in the ministry of uh, health and family welfare he actually belongs to the andhra pradesh cadre of ias and he is also an iit graduate from uh, delhi so mr love agarwal is the current joint secretary in the ministry of health and family welfare next india reported its first corona virus on which date so india reported its first corona virus on 30th of january 2020 which i have earlier mentioned as the index case that index case was reported on 30th of january 2020 that is the particular date on which we first reported our case then on which date indians observed a voluntary lockdown by the name janata curfew for a period of or for a time frame of 14 hours starting from around 7 pm in the morning we have gone up to around 9 pm at night so that we called uh, infamously as the janata curfew so janata curfew was observed on 22nd of march 2020 which was a sunday so 22nd of march 2020 after that the government has two days later the government has officially announced the total lockdown of india so 22nd of march 2020 and that is when we have observed something called as the janata curfew yeah next the first virus fatality in india was allegedly reported now i have used this word allegedly because there is a little controversy on this so allegedly report from which part of india that is from gulbarga karnataka now he is one mr sidiki now mr sidiki has returned from uh, his uh, son who is a dentist in jadda now he has uh, landed at hyderabad then he has taken a cab and he has gone to gulbarga his native place and that is when he has later admitted into a hospital with the the symptoms of the corona virus now the problem here is that the government takes this as the first fatality but the kin of the deceased person they allege that the government has not issued them a death certificate saying that this person has died because of so and so and also that uh, when he was alive the doctors who have diagnosed him the private hospital doctors who have diagnosed uh, that person have not said anything about he suffering from the corona virus but uh, after the death in post mortem when the samples were corrected the serum samples and all that is when the government has said that this was the first fatality so there was a controversy on that whether that person really died of corona or not but the kin so allege that he has not died of that not the government has issued any death certificate stating that to be the reason but any which was let us take it for now that uh, mr siddiqui who died in gulbarga karnataka was the first fatality that was uh, declared in india then who is the current union minister of health and family welfare and now the first option i have given this as the portfolio is under the prime minister now prime minister can have uh, various portfolios right under him now say for example atomic energy uh, for example uh, isro uh, and sometimes the ministry of personnel so they also work under the prime minister directly so sometimes it may so happen in such kind of a uh, um uh, a disaster or such kind of an extraordinary circumstance the prime minister himself may take the responsibility of certain portfolios so that is the reason why i have given that to be the first option but any which ways currently the union minister of health and family welfare is mr harshwardhan mr harshwardhan i mentioned nitin gadkari you know uh, he is the current minister for uh, road transport and shipping and mr prakash javadekar you know he is the current minister for um, environment and forest then who is the prime minister of italy which was one of the covid 19's worst affected countries in the world so after the us uh, it was italy which was the worst affected of the all european countries so who is the prime minister of italy so he is mr giuseppe conto giuseppe conti he was the prime minister of italy and mr boris johnson you know he is the prime minister for uh, britain england and he was one of the persons who suffered from that he is slowly recovering from the virus so boris johnson is the prime minister of england mikhail misostin is the prime minister of russia so recently it has been announced that he also contracted uh, the virus it was two days ago 
Pedro Sanchez Pedro Sanchez is the prime minister of Spain so Spain was also one country which suffered as much as Italy did so Pedro Sanchez was the prime minister is is the prime minister of Spain so the first is Italy second is England third is Russia and fourth is that of Spain the next how far is beijing from wuhan the epicenter for this covid 19 so beijing if we take it purely from geographical distance it comes up to be approximately 1055 kilometers 1055 if we take it through road it is around uh, 1150 kilometers there is a 100 kilometers of a difference if you take it through a road calculation but if we take it by pure geographical location calculation point of view it is approximately 1055 kilometers now wuhan which is a part of the hubei province so that is 1055 kilometers away from the chinese capital of beijing next the penultimate question which are the following drugs is being used by some countries in the treatment of covid-19 now you might have come across this that the us president have literally threatened india that if you are not going to send these drugs there can be retaliatory action against india there can be consequences so what was this drug india has exported this drug to number of uh, countries and this drug is generally used for containment of malaria and what is the name of that drug which has become very famous in the news and that is hydroxy chloroquine hydroxy chloroquine that is being used with in combination of certain other kind of antibiotics so hydroxy chloroquine is the the famous or infamous drug that is being used in the treatment of uh, uh the current covid and there are people who argue that it has got its own side effects but still uh, us is one country which is determined to use this in the treatment of the the current coronavirus now penicillin you know which is used in the treatment of malaria also in the initial days then ciprofloxacin is a is an antibiotic which is used against bacterial infections and myconazole is something which is used <coughs> sorry generally against fungal infections so as you know virus is not going to be treated with a drug immediately uh, because virus has got the capability to mutate so therefore it keeps changing its structures so that is why it becomes extremely difficult you know for a common cold also currently we don't have any drug so therefore uh, the only uh, weapon we may be having in hand is going to be vaccination so that takes some time before it comes out of the clinical trials and all so let's go for the last question now so the last question is regarding tablighi jamaat and you know this has also become very very famous in the news and people started calling the this particular area to be the super spreader or whatever it is so tablighi jamaat what is the meaning of tablighi jamaat it is it means the society of preachers the people who preach their religion a society of preachers now tablighi jamaat It has got its uh, footprint in more than around uh, 200 countries now tablighi jamaat was founded in 1926 it was founded in india and it was founded by whom that was the question now sir sayed ahmed khan you know is the person who is behind the establishment of aligarh muslim university okay khan abdul ghafar khan is called the frontier gandhi he is behind something called the red shirts or khudai kidmatgar Sayyid Ahmad Rai Bareilly is somebody who has introduced or who started the Wahhabi movement in India which is related to Darul Islam and that is a different concept that you come across when you study this modern Indian history now that leaves with one option that is Mr Muhammad Ilyas Al Khandlawi this was the person who started the concept called Tablighi Jamaat now Tablighi Jamaat has got its headquarters in uh, Nizamuddin west of Delhi it's called the bangla wali mask bangalow wali mask and that is the headquarters for the tablighi so tablighi was started by mohammad ilias al khandlawi so that was in 1926 so these are the set of 15 questions with i i thought from the current affairs point of view is going to be important in your preparation for the exam or even for general people also to have some idea as to what has happened until today So I hope I have added some value to your understanding of the current pandemic and thank you so much for watching uh, if you like it then please go ahead and uh, subscribe to our channel dimensions coaching center uh, we keep giving you updates on these current affairs and we will also be conducting number of quiz and online classes on that so there is also a telegram group uh, which you can join uh, it's a channel 
so you can come across various quiz various questions tests in that channel so please go ahead subscribe share like and comment so thank you for watching once again